Most people think we're just docile, harmless social outcasts, but programmers are quite possibly the most dangerous people on the planet. Usually, when code kills, it's by accident, like when a race condition in the Thorac 25 radiation machine accidentally overdosed six people. Sometimes a lack of code kills people, like the Boeing 737 MAX crashes likely could have been prevented with better testing and a few extra lines of code. But sometimes bad code is intentional, like when this dude in Maroochyshire, Australia released millions of liters of poop into the local parks and rivers by sending unauthorized commands to the pump software. And yesterday, programmers once again demonstrated their formidable power by penetrating the healthcare system in the UK, shutting down services at two of London's largest hospitals. In today's video, we'll take a look at this new cyber attack that just dropped, and I'll teach you how to do your own ransomware attack in JavaScript, because I know you're a good person and would never use this code to do anything bad in real life. It is June 6, 2024, and you're watching The Code Report. So in London, hospitals partnered with Synovus, like King's College Hospital and and guys in St. Thomas were forced to shut down services and divert patients elsewhere due to a ransomware attack. Luckily for emergencies, they can revert to paper records, and nobody died, but it's a harsh reminder of how utterly dependent we are on computer technology. At this point, we don't have any actual details on the attack vector, but the mainstream media is already blaming it on the Russians, and they're likely using the Rust programming language. That's probably a pretty good guess, because the Russians have been behind many ransomware attacks in the past. There's a group called Revel, or Ransomware Evil, which is notorious as a ransomware as a service operation. And at one point, they managed to steal confidential schematics of Apple products. And there's also Darkseid, which is believed to be based in Russia and was responsible for the Colonial Pipeline cyber attack. But the country of origin is irrelevant because a good attacker should be able to operate anonymously from anywhere. What's crazy, though, is that many ransomware attacks are actually successful. After they cripple your billion dollar business, it makes a lot more sense to just pay them a couple hundred grand in crypto to get them to go away and hope that karma comes back to them eventually. Before we implement our own ransomware attack, though, there's one thing you should do. Install the daily.dev Chrome plugin, the sponsor of today's video. It's a completely free tool that keeps you up to speed on developer news, so you never miss out on the latest new game-changing JavaScript framework. It's a tool built by developers for developers to curate all the information you need in the programming space. But most importantly, it's a great place to network with other like-minded developers. Not only will you find discussions throughout the site, but you can also join squads to network with other professionals using the same tech stack as you. It's truly an amazing resource Source, and at the low, low price of free, really every developer should be part of the daily.dev community. And now let's talk about how ransomware attacks actually work. Step one is to penetrate. You'll need to get access to a computer system, ideally a big, valuable enterprise system, and that's typically done through phishing. You spam out emails to their employees that contain an attachment that they just can't resist opening. Or if the company is dumb enough to use JavaScript on the server, you can have them install a malicious NPM package. Once installed, we can log their credentials and gain access to the mainframe. Step two is explore. We'll take some time to explore the file system and locate any valuable data and systems that can cripple the business. Make sure to download any valuable data to a separate hard drive. Step three is encryption. We don't want to destroy their data, we just want to encrypt it to make it useless to them temporarily. We can easily accomplish that in JavaScript with the node crypto module. We'll need two separate functions, one to encrypt a file and one to decrypt a file. When you're ready, go ahead and run the script. Then step four is the ransom note. The ransom note should have them pay you in untraceable cryptos. And when writing it, make sure to cut out letters from different magazines to make it completely untraceable. What's hilarious is that they're not going to know how to do this, so they're going to hire a cybersecurity consulting firm that will get paid to pay you the ransom. I kid you not, that's often what happens in real life. Colonial Pipeline paid $4.4 in ransom, and it's unclear whether or not the London hospitals will pay any ransom. And that brings us to step 5a. If they pay you, do the right thing and decrypt their data. Then launder your money through other cryptos and move to a non-extradition country. But if they don't pay you, you'll have to resort to plan B. It was never about the money anyway, it's about sending a message. Go ahead and release all the proprietary data and trade secrets, and you may even be able to monetize it by selling it on the dark web. Congratulations, you just did a ransom. Obviously this is highly illegal, and you should never do this because the simulation is always watching, and you'll either be punished in this life or the next. This has been The Code Report, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.